live picture. It's about 4 o'clock in the morning there now. Uh, it, for the last couple of hours, what we've been seeing has been very quiet. Uh, there were at least a dozen explosions in the city. This time, the attack began much earlier in the evening. You could see some of the cruise missiles hit. Hear the explosions. The anti-aircraft fire. The smoke hanging over the city. We don't yet know what kind of damage has occurred. But here's what Iraq looks like after the first night of bombing. Buildings destroyed, a water main broken. Today, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs says several targets were destroyed. And where you see, in this case, this building right here, you'll notice down here, there's nothing left but rubble. Most of the cruise missiles have been launched from ships in the Gulf, but some may have been air-launched cruise missiles from B-52 bombers. Those missiles were built by Boeing right here in the Northwest. By midnight tonight, Northwest sailors on the USS Vinson will be on scene in the Gulf. Uh, I'm sure that they're uh, doing dry runs right now in terms of uh, all the preparations they make, a lot of planning going on, uh, and they'll be ready on arrival to execute whatever tasking might come down. When the USS Vinson sailed out of Puget Sound, it was 400 crew members short. The Admiral says those open positions are mostly for young sailors in training. But will that personnel shortage lead to stress in a battle situation? Where the stress shows up is if we have really intense, extended 24-hour day operations. In other words, if they were striking and striking and striking, and we had to have that flight deck man 24 hours a day for days on end, that's where the real impact is. Now, the Admiral says from what he sees on TV, that is not the situation in this conflict with Iraq. And there we have our live picture of downtown Baghdad. As you can see, it looks fairly quiet. It's about 4 o'clock in the morning there. You can still see traffic on the streets of Baghdad. Now, these are the forces from our area that are in the Gulf right now. From Fairchild Air Force Base, 135 personnel. From McCord Air Force Base, 55 personnel. Fort Lewis has 18 soldiers there, there with a medical unit. Now, 800 personnel from Whidbey Island have been deployed, including 200 aboard the carrier Enterprise. Another 200 from Whidbey are on the USS Carl Vinson, which is on its way to the Gulf, although it's 3,200 sailors from Bremerton. Now, it will arrive in the Gulf any time now, we're told, at least before midnight our time. Bremerton also has 600 sailors en route to the Gulf on the USS Rainier. That ship, though, won't be on scene until Sunday. Sabrina, Dan, back to you. Thank you, Emily. Now let's go to Whidbey Island where come with Tracy Vetter is standing by. Tracy, we understand some families will have to make some new plans for the holidays. Well, that's a, certainly a possibility. Nobody's saying that yet, but that's the bad possibility that they're looking forward to. The Navy has called off a scheduled homecoming because of the action in the Gulf. A squadron of prowlers was expected to come home tomorrow night, and, and the Navy has decided to keep them in Saudi Arabia until at least Sunday and perhaps longer. We're talking about 180 crew members over there. Very tough news for family members here. They and aviators who just returned from the Gulf area are watching the news with uh, both pride as well as some anxious moments. All day long, the sound of PA-6B prowlers flying touch-and-go patterns over the skies of Whidbey Island. This is normal training for the prowler base, but everyone here knows their colleagues in the Gulf are doing this for real. We're very proud of uh, what that particular battle group is doing, and our, our thoughts and prayers are with them. Would-be prowlers have been part of airstrikes in Iraq both yesterday and today. Their radar jamming electronics and anti-radar missiles are critical components in disabling Iraq's air defense system. The anti-aircraft artillery and surface-to-air missiles that could threaten U.S. planes. What we're attempting to do is we're attempting to degrade them down to where they're having to simply shoot blindly. You know, kind of think of ourselves, I guess, as the bodyguards to make sure that everybody comes back safely. Lieutenants Jonathan William and Jerry Fiegels are both electronic warfare officers who just returned last week from the Gulf. Today, they're wishing they were back there. Nobody wants to fight, and uh, you know we've all got families, and nobody wants to want, wants uh, a fight to break out. But if it's going to happen, of course we're professionals, and, and we'd like to be a part of the team that's out there doing it. Woodby Naval Air Station now has two carrier-based prowler squadrons in the region, in the Gulf region, they are aboard the USS Enterprise and the USS Carl Vinson. There are two land-based squadrons there as well, 
both of them in Saudi Arabia. That's close to 800 people in the Gulf region, and no word yet on when any of them might be coming home. Reporting live at Whidbey Island Naval Air Station, I'm Tracy Vetter, Como 4 News. Tracy, thank you. Families in Bremerton found out today their loved ones will arrive in the Gulf later tonight. Como's April Zapata joins us now from the Bremerton Naval Shipyard. April? Well, the bulk of Northwest military personnel that will be in the Gulf are from here, Bremerton. And with thousands headed for the Gulf, you have just as many families here worrying and thinking about their loved ones. 21-year-old Donald Brooks puts fuses in bombs. I know that there are people watching out for him. He is among 3,200 sailors aboard the USS Carl Vincent, which is traveling towards the Gulf with the USS Rainier, carrying 600 more Bremerton sailors, leaving behind nearly 4,000 families like Gretchen and her 14-month-old daughter, Alexandria. <laughs> We have interrupted April Zepeda's report right now to bring you a live picture from Baghdad. It appears, at least the possibility, that the U.S. might be attacking again. The tracer bullets are coming up from the ground in Baghdad. This is the kind of scene we have seen when the air raids have been going. We have not heard the, just listening for a second to see if the air raid sirens are going off in the background. We have not heard them just yet, but it is very clear that some tracer bullets are being fired. The anti-aircraft missiles you can see them going up from the ground in Baghdad, and this is the kind of scene that we have seen when a U.S. missile attack has been underway. And Dan, I've just learned from our producer that someone has heard one big boom, we're, one we're big explosion uh, in just the last few minutes I mean, as these tracer bullets have been going by. We have compared today's situation to yesterday's in our coverage throughout the afternoon today, and that is that yesterday when the first wave went in, there were several waves that followed. Today, the first wave went in at about 11 o'clock our time, which was 10 o'clock at night in Baghdad, and it has been quiet since. Right now, it's 4 in the morning in Baghdad. We are uh, 11 hours behind them, so it is Friday morning there, 4 in the morning, and it does come as no surprise that there might be another missile attack from the United States. The President, the Pentagon, and many others not being specific about our plans in our attacks against Iraq, but making it very clear that it would be an ongoing mission, maybe lasting four days or more. We're hearing a series of very well, loud explosions seeing, uh, now out on the edge Increased of the activity here. We've seen some lights in just the last couple of minutes. And again, the tracer bullets, here. seems like they're, they're actually increasing, Dan. Uh, let's pause a moment and hear if we can, because there is a reporter in the background briefing his people back in the United States. Do not hear them right now, but when we hear them talking again, we'll listen to well, them. It's come very close to the center. About five and a half hours ago, we had an enormous, um, very loud series of explosions right here around the Al-Rashid Hotel, in fact, not far from the Ministry of Information, perhaps only three or four blocks away where these uh, cruise missiles came in. <coughs> we understand that some government offices were hit here. These, uh, judging by the, the time it takes the explosion to reach our ears after we see the flash, may be more than a mile away from the center of town here, but these are very big explosions. We understand, of course, from Jack McQuethy at the Pentagon that these are air-launched cruise missiles which carry the uh, heavier uh, payload of 2,000 pounds, so they're uh, very serious business when they hit. And we're now seeing uh, a number of these red traces dancing. There's another flash on the horizon, and uh, it's just behind this building. We can't see exactly where it's hitting, but you'll hear the big boom again in about uh, three or four seconds. I'm sure I'll be quiet just for a moment. It is clear now I can't that tell there how much is a second attack. Up, we can Today, even second attack out. underway right uh, now. We heard Bill Blakemore, I believe, is the ABC <coughs> correspondent in Baghdad that we were listening away. to, talking about the situation that it has been confirmed from the see, Pentagon the that there are air-launched missiles the hitting a rock right now. In fact, we did just hear some in the background. It comes uh, as no surprise as well that they might be outside the city of Baghdad, although we don't know how widespread this is right now very often these attacks. In fact, the one earlier today, there were some heavy hits in Baghdad, but many deep into the country of Iraq and along the country's borders. The anti-aircraft missiles, the tracer bullets being fired from the ground in Iraq. As Operation Desert Fox continues, 
One of the reasons, of course, that the United States, the Pentagon, and the White House will not ever confirm what their uh, exact plans are is to keep Iraq, keep Saddam off guard, the element of surprise, very important in any military situation. So here it is, 4.10 in the morning in Iraq, and the United States and the Britons are, again, launching missiles into Baghdad and the area around the capital city. And Dan, while, why we are able to hear the sound so much better than we were yesterday is because, uh, as Bill Blakemore mentioned, they're air-launched cruise missiles rather than from a ship, and uh, the payload is much bigger, 2,000 pounds as opposed to 1,000. So the story continues to develop right now before our very eyes, live television these days. We can see exactly what is happening. Of course, we cannot uh, identify what targets uh, there are or what targets are being hit, but the U.S.